I started off the show today, Kurt, talking about Draymond Green and 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 wondering like, okay, when do the Warriors get to the point when they say, yeah, yeah, you know, all this <laughs> stuff, all the drama that you bring, uh, the drama doesn't necessarily match your game now. You're not the Draymond of five years ago. So why are we doing this? But they probably won't. They'll probably continue to make excuses for him. Even I make excuses for him instinctively. Just wonder what you think, uh, Kurt. Uh, wh what did you think? First of all, welcome to the show. Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see but you, sir. What What did you think of this when you heard about this fight and the punch, and we saw the punch? Draymond versus yeah, say the, yeah it, I think the video in a lot of like a lot of things, just having a video or audio like changes things. It makes it a little more visceral and real. That, that video of, of the punch is hard to watch. Maybe not as hard to watch as the Broncos Colts game, but still like really hard yes. to watch. Right. <laughs> um, and that's a really good question because there's a long line of Draymond stuff. I mean, going back to, I mean, well, before this, but there was obviously the, the game five suspension after the kick at LeBron in 2016 that changed that series. Don't forget he argued with Kevin Durant on the sidelines the year before KD left and then they get on a podcast together and blame Kerr and Myers. Like there's a, there's a litany of these things. Thing is, we know how it goes in sports. Draymond performs on the court, on the court, man. Their defense is just better when he's out there. He is not peak Draymond. He's not 2015. He's not blocking shots like that. He's not at as athletic, but his mental game is still there. He is still in the right plot spots. I mean, well, sure. He's still, he's still that guy, but the day is coming. He is not the same player he was. And without getting into a lot of detail, they are running up against it. If they, they can't basically their ownership has said they can't extend Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green at the prices they want. They're going to have to make some choices. Jordan Poole is a gimme. In fact, that probably gets done in the next, before this season starts because he's young you're going to, the market is set for him. Thank you very much, Tyler Hero. Like the market's set for him. So you kind of know, he, look, he's a bridge to the future along with Kuminga and Wiseman and Moody and everybody else. Like they got to keep him. But then it comes down to it. I don't know if Draymond Green's going to be there a whole lot longer. Are they going to keep Wiggins as a, right. a younger player that transfers? Or is it, are they going to see if they can lowball Green to keep him because, or let him test the market? Yeah, see, Kurt, I, I think I'm so glad you bring up that point. The point about those three guys, those, those three guys, Poole, yeah. Green, and Wiggins. Because you know what that is? That is context for the story. And I was kind of, you know, yeah. um, I was giving Draymond a hard time off the top of the show saying, hey, you want to be a reporter? Well, give us the scoop. You got to get you got to do these real stories too, not just stories that you want to tell. And I think, it, you know, Draymond obviously is not going to do that, but Non-journalists tend to do this in sports. So Bob Myers and Steve Kerr, very media savvy. Uh, they they yes. they're convincing. So they're trying to get out in front of it. Uh, this has nothing to do with money. Hey, Jordan yeah. Poole's attitude was great. That had nothing to do with. Okay, so it has nothing to do with money. The attitude was great. Why why do you think why do you think you have your your power forward going in there and just slugging? Uh, a young a young player who, who gave you almost 19 points a game last year and was a really key player for your team. So, uh, yeah, they, they don't really they don't do they're great, but they don't do what we do, right? No, you know, it, they, there was subtext there that, that between that and by the way, that punch borders on a sucker punch. Like I, we can debate oh, yeah, back and yes. forth whether it was or not, but I agree. But like that, I mean, they were chest to chest, but he came at him. I mean, that escalation was rapid and kind of out of. Yep. Everybody's seen the pushing matches. This was, you know, another level of escalation. And the video gets into that. I expect the Warriors, like you said, you know what they're going to do? Hey, we'd seen the video. We know the only person in trouble for this, whoever leaked that video, that, that guy's gone. <laughs> they figure out well, who that is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Really? Okay. It, the person who leaked that video, I, I, I don't know who it is, but maybe it suggests yeah. that they're a little tired. A little tired of the Draymond act and hey, maybe he should get it's not because if we don't have that video, Kurt, you know what we're doing? Uh, and, and I heard I heard my friend Stephen A. Smith doing this uh, yesterday. Uh, Stephen A. says it's much to do about nothing. 
yeah. today. This stuff happens all the time. No, this stuff doesn't happen all the time. What we saw doesn't yeah. happen all the time. But before we saw it, we might be tempted to say something like that because, hey, it was a fight at practice. Two guys, two professional competitive athletes, yeah. of course. This, this is a little different. And maybe the person who leaked the video uh, wants the public to see that it wasn't just some equal fight between Jordan Poole and Draymond Green. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, I, part of it is, you know, look, TMZ got this, which means TMZ paid for it. So there, there's some somebody got a bag out of this for sure. Um, right. that, said, <laughs> that said, what was wild was the reaction of other NBA players to this. And a bunch of them tweeted it out, but it's also been like just because their reaction wasn't, hey, there was a fight at practice or, hey, that was kind of over the top. It was, how'd that get out? Who let practice video out? Like you can't, they consider yeah. that kind of like, and you've, and you've been in locker rooms, like they consider it their yeah. sanctuary. They're not comfortable with other people in there. Practice is the same way. They don't want what happens in practice getting out. It's their space. And the fact this was leaked bothered them more, I think more than the actual punch and incident. So uh, when we get back to the games here, if you look at it, um, uh, we, we know the Warriors are going to be be there at the end yeah. uh, with or without Draymond. They'll be there at the end uh, in the conversation. Are, are you are you looking at the are you looking at the Clippers? And I see the Clippers are getting a lot of love. Do you yeah. put the Clippers on the same level as the Warriors or do you think the Warriors are there by themselves? Yeah, a week from today, I've got my tears coming out uh, east and west and don't hey, I am. Leaving. I don't want you to spoil it. Tease us. I, well, don't I, give it up. Don't I'll give it up. Yeah, I, well, I'll tease it. I'll tease a little of it. The Spurs don't land very high. The, <laughs> I'm, de- I'm, I'm still kind of debating what to do with the Clippers. The, look, the Warriors are themselves. First off, Green being gone, possible offseason. This is all next offseason. That none of they are going to. It's YOLO, man. Even if they can't bring everybody back, they are going to make one more full run at this thing this year, while. They've got a healthier Clay Thompson, and, and Steph Curry is still able to perform this way. We'll see in a couple of years, man. We'll, we'll see. Um, but I've got the Clippers. I'm not sure what to do with them. I think healthy. They are the. I will. I might even pick them to come out of the West. But you're, the bet is really obvious and simple, isn't it? Like this is a deep team. This is a versatile team. It is a very well coached team. They've got great defense. Like up and down. Everything simple. Is Kawhi Leonard healthy? Is Paul George healthy? If those two guys are healthy entering the playoffs, I think the Clippers are the best team in the West. I just, that's a hard commitment to make. Like, that's the question I've, it's not just me. Like, that's the obvious question about them. Well, you you uh, you said it uh, in a joking way, but let's get back to it. You said you don't have the Spurs in there uh, in a top <laughs> tier. You don't have the Spurs there. You don't have the Jazz there. You also no. don't have the Oklahoma City Thunder there. And all of these teams are competing for another championship. And that is that uh, <laughs> they want to be number one. They want to get the great Victor Wimbanyama. Uh, he is unbelievable. I, you know, you heard the hype, Kurt, but then to see him the last couple of games, I think a lot of NBA people, a lot of uh, basketball fans, casual fans, really were able to see what all the hype is about. And I think the hype is justified. What do you make of this? Yeah, Yeah, look, I'm not a scout. And my reaction was, whoa, like seven, four and like effortlessly hitting step back threes, running the pick and roll. Like he is the ball handler on a pick and roll. It's Durant like, except he's taller. Like where he's like, I'll I'll run the pick and roll. And if you go under it, I'll just bury you. He's hitting. he was blocking shots. He's like Gobert and that he's so not only tall, but I mean, he's got a 7'11 wingspan, apparently, uh, according to the, the measurements out there. Like that, that just alters shots, right? You think you've got your, you're driving the lane. You think you've got your angle and you can get around him it, and it goes away because he's just so long and can cover so much ground. So every scout I talk to, everybody I've ever talked to in the league that has seen him play, especially after this weekend, it's there. Like he is number one. There's yes, there are some concerns about health long term. I we all get that. You have to take him one. And by the way, Scoot Henderson looked really good. 
Scoot Henderson's yeah. going to be special, man. Right. And and he was he and was he was he was the opening. You and he's the opening act. Figured out, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Look, Scoot was I I loathe these kind of player comparisons, but I've now had two scouts use the Derrick Rose comparison, and that's that's high praise. I mean, that's just such stupid high praise. Um, he could be, there's at least two. And by the way, this chat is deeper than that. There's the Thompson twins and some other guys, the Thompson twins, not just an eighties band anymore. They are, this is going to be a Thank really, you. Thank you. I got that reference. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many people did. I got it right there. Went right there. Thompson twins. Got Please. it. I love it. So let me ask you this. Uh, LeBron thinks that there should be a team in Las Vegas. You spent time in Vegas. I have too. Can Vegas handle a basketball team? We already got football. You got hockey. They went to the Stanley Cup final in their first season. Yeah. Uh, so, so throw a throw a basketball team in there. You really have a major league market in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, is Vegas ready? Is the NBA ready? NBA is very ready. I mean, first off, the NBA is there all the time, right? But they're there every summer already for summer league, and that's turned into a production. It's it's a huge thing now. Uh, but beyond that. What the Knights have shown and, and the Raiders, the Raiders draw from everywhere, they, Southern California and Oakland, but they still have this fan base out there. What the Knights, though, really showed was, yeah, we'll get behind it. You will fill this building. They have a beautiful, I don't know if you've been to the T-Mobile Center, it is a fantastic new building. Um, it is fully NBA ready. Uh, as soon as the NBA, they're not going to talk about expansion until they figure out the CBA uh, with the players and lock up long-term you know, labor security then work out a new TV deal. And Michael, it's because then that franchise is worth more, right? Like you, you could sell, you could expand now, but if you expand in two years, you are going to get 50% more because you've got labor security and a better television deal and streaming deal. So they'll do it in a couple of years is kind of the sense around the league. And, you know, by the end, my guess is Seattle and Vegas will have teams by the end of the decade, but it's not, it's not like two years away. It's, a few years out. Yeah, and that's why uh, the the interesting thing, LeBron saying, like to own a team in Vegas. Yeah, like owning a team in Vegas because by the time that that Vegas team gets there and the Seattle team gets there, I think, not sure, Kurt. I think his career will be over. Are you comfortable <laughs> saying his career will be over by that time? I'm half comfortable. I, again, I'm half convinced he's like a liquid metal terminator that's not human and can just play forever. But, but we'll see, man. I, he's he's obviously thinking about it, and uh, he's obviously got the connections. He's look, he's he's a billionaire, but there is probably a three billion dollar franchise fee, let alone all the other startup costs. Like it's going to be expensive to get in this to get in the club. Um, but he knows the people who can do it. He's going to be able to put together a team. He and uh, look, he's, he has surrounded himself with sm such smart businessmen. He's not just saying this willy nilly. You know, there have been discussions and and some level of groundwork laid for whatever that will be in a few years. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.